take you over here. And let's see if we can hear this. If you guys can hear that, bearing sounds dry. This video is brought to you by Sportland. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today we have a somewhat of an emergency call on a kitchen AC not working. That kitchen AC over there on the right. This is my unit right here. And uh, the thermostat is blank downstairs. Let's go ahead and open this up. Let's see what we got in here. We have a unit that appears to have power. Doesn't look like it has any safety limits on it. We've got a call for fan and a call for occupied, but no call for cooling. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna check incoming power. We should have 208 three phase. Line one to line two. Line one to line three. Line two to line three. So we have three phase power coming into this unit. It is the correct voltage. The next thing that we need to check is uh, transformer 24 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and check it at the uh, terminal strip for the thermostat wire. And 24 volts going down to the thermostat. Whether or not we have 24 volts at the thermostat is the question. So let's jump down there and take a look. All right, we have a blank thermostat here and uh, look right here, we've got some corrosion right there. That's not good. And uh, we're going to go ahead and test for 24 volts at the thermostat. Between R and C, we have 24 volts present. So it looks like we have a bad thermostat here. All right, I made a temporary repair. And what I did was uh, we're in the middle of this COVID thing. So they're only using their kitchen AC and their bar AC. So I grabbed the thermostat off of the dining room temporarily, just the, the faceplate, swapped it over to get them through the night and I'll come back uh, possibly tomorrow if not Monday morning with a new thermostat but they'll be fine for now I've got three stage cooling units running I double check the tightness of the belt and uh, all the condenser fan motors are running so we're good for now and we'll come back out all right we've got a, a new thermostat installed here and uh, we just need to basically program it um, we're gonna go ahead and jump up onto the roof and check the unit out. We got call for fan Y1 and Y2 and all the compressors are running. So that's a good sign. That means the thermostat was wired up right. I didn't screw everything up. Um, when I was here the other day, I noticed that the indoor blower motor was making a god awful sound. So we're gonna kind of investigate that a little bit. I'll take you over here. And let's see if we can hear this. You guys can hear that bearing sounds dry so i'm gonna shut this guy down and uh pull that out and try to lube up the bearings or grease up the bearings and see if that helps When you grease bearings, don't be that guy that leaves grease everywhere. Got to get in there and uh, remove the grease from the Zerk fitting down in there. And it looks like these seals are starting to go bad. 
But yeah, remove the grease, that way there's not a big old mound of it later. Same thing, back in here, get the grease all cleaned off. And I had gotten some right down here. That way, you don't get a surprise. These blower wheels are dirty, man. These things need to be pulled out and like thoroughly cleaned. All right, we are gonna grease the motor bearings too. Now this one works out nice because we have a drain. So I can put a Zerk fitting right here and then we have a drain out the other side. That way we're not just packing it full of useless grease. So we're gonna push the grease in there and then let it come out the other side, then seal it up. I temporarily stole the Zerk fitting from the bearing. I just pulled it off. I'm gonna put it on here temporarily and then uh, I'll grease these guys up on both sides and hope that that solves that problem too. Yeah, those bearings were dry. I pushed it through and all that came through was mine. I didn't even push out any old grease. So, yeah, huh. those things were dry. Much better. The, uh, the motor pulley's going bad, so the belt's kind of riding funny in there. But bearings sound good. I don't hear that grinding sound coming from there anymore. That is just that freaking bell. We'll talk to him about putting new pulley on there, but all right, cool. We might have got him some more life out of that. I utilize that umbrella like a lot to try to keep the sun off my neck because I'm just so afraid of skin cancer. Just gonna start getting ready to uh, hook up my smart probe so I can check everything with measure quick. Make sure the unit's kind of somewhat doing okay. The condenser doesn't look too dirty, so that's a plus. All right, so my unit, according to Measure Quick, has a little low on the head pressure. I mean, I'm sorry, suction pressure. Let's go ahead and scroll through. Sub cooling's a little bit high. We don't really use sub cooling on this unit so much as we use approach, though. Uh, the approach temperature that they want is approximately six degrees. So our approach temperature right now is about four degrees. So it kind of acts like it might be a little overcharged, but it could also be a dirty condenser. What's alarming is my return air. Do you see how it says 85 degrees? That's really high because it's not 85 degrees in that kitchen right now. Airflow looks very low too. Temperature splits kind of high. I already kind of have an idea what's going on. I'm gonna take you over there and show you right now. I had opened this a minute ago and I noticed something when I was putting my probe in there. Now look, this is a full-fledged economizer. We're pulling 100% outside air because of the way it's set up. The indoor air damper is completely closed. Now, it's probably for building balance because they have some funky stuff going on here with their balance. Let's look at these metal mesh filters. Plugged up. These metal mesh filters are plugged. These metal mesh filters is your return air right now because they're pulling so much outside air here. Right, so this is almost like a dedicated outside air unit, but it essentially has no return air. So I'm gonna pull those things out and we're gonna watch that suction pressure and that airflow rise. All right, so that's a little bit better, but we still need to clean that blower assembly too. So this unit's definitely in need of some love, but it's operational. I'm gonna go ahead and check out the other stages right now. All right, this is my second stage now. Approach is low. Okay, we're gonna jump onto the third stage. Pretty much the same on the second stage. Uh, third stage is running much higher head pressure. What the heck? Superheat is extremely high. Subcoin's extremely high. Approach is kind of on point though, that's weird. All right, so at this point, everything is, is indicating kind of uh, low airflow, uh, kind of seems like the unit needs a good PM. Obviously the metal mesh filters are plugged. Uh, the condenser I think is kind of acting like it might be a little plugged up too, even though it doesn't quite look it. So uh, we're gonna talk to the customer. We got the unit operational by changing the thermostat, but we're gonna talk to them uh, about uh, doing some PM work. Cause if you look over here too, we got water leaking all over the floor. Um, my umbrella is blowing all over the place. But yeah, you got water leaking from that unit. Just look at this, just pouring out of here. water just pouring out of that guy 
helping this guy out. Let's see what it looks like. Look at that. Oh yeah. This thing's vibrating to all hell. Really bad. This is their bar unit. Holy crap. That's not good. You got something stuck in that blower wheel, man. Whew. Yeah, they need some PM work here. So uh, we'll talk to them and see what they want to do. I just pulled those metal mesh filters out for now. Okay, when it comes to calls like that, you know, the customer doesn't always want me to do the big picture repair. Um, I went to them. We had a bad thermostat. Uh, I've said this a million times with all my videos right now. We're in the middle of this virus thing, and they don't want to spend any money that they don't have to spend. So the original service call was kind of an emergency service call um, where they wanted us to. It was late in the evening on a Friday. They wanted us to come out, get their air conditioner up and running, found a bad thermostat. I ended up doing a temporary repair. Okay, I ended up stealing the front uh, thermostat basically off their dining room AC throwing it onto the kitchen to get them through the weekend. And then I came back out Monday morning, changed the thermostat, finished going through the rest of the unit. I heard a funny noise when I was there on Friday, investigated it, found that the bearings were dried out on the motor and on the, uh, the indoor blower assembly. So I greased all the bearings. You saw how I greased the bearings on the motor. You got to be very careful when you're, when you're filling up motors with grease. If there's nowhere for that grease to go, um, it can become a problem. Uh, sometimes on some of the motors, if you pull it, start pulling apart motors. When you change motors, pull them apart and just look at where the grease goes. Okay. Oftentimes there's nowhere for it. In this situation, I had a grease fitting and, and, and basically a drain. So I was able to push grease in one side, eliminate all the old grease. There really wasn't much left of it and uh, put all the fittings back on. Then I put the Zerk fittings back on the main blower bearings, okay? I used to carry Zerk fittings in my van, just like a little case of them, but I never used them, so I took them out, and here we go. I finally found a point where I could use them, but it is what it is. So I went to the customer, and I let them know, hey, this is everything that's going on. I got your unit operational. We really need to do a good PM on it, and they chose to just let it be for the time being. I even told them about the other unit that sounded like a helicopter about to take off on the roof, they said, just leave it be right now until the unit takes a dump. They just want to leave them alone. You know, I still go into every call looking at the big picture, giving them all the information. And then that way, when something bad happens after I leave, it's not my fault. I've given them everything. I've, you know, given them my suggestions. This is what should be done. This is what's broken. La di da. I need to clean it before I can finish diagnosing that kind of stuff. But, you know, sometimes they don't go for the big picture repair. It is what it is. I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Um, if you guys see any tools that I use in the videos that you guys like, you can help to support the channel. If you choose to do so, truetechtools.com, you can use my offer code big picture one word. You'll save 8% on your order and I get a small commission so it helps to financially support the, uh, the channel. The other way that you guys can help to support the channel, there's several ways, but the easiest way is to just simply watch the video and watch through the commercials. If you watch through the commercials, you let YouTube pay me. I know sometimes the commercials suck. The videos that I produce nowadays, I only try to put one or two commercials in the video, usually lean towards one. So I'm not bombarding the middle of the video with commercials, okay? You guys could really, really help me out by doing that. Do me a favor, leave me some feedback down in the comments. Send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Uh, come check out my live stream Monday evenings, work permitting, so long as I can get off work in time, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time, and I usually answer questions and talk about all the stuff that goes on in the videos. Really appreciate you, and we will catch you guys on the next one, okay?